Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Red Wing Shoes, located in the shops at Centerpoint in Grand Rapids at the corner of 28th Street and the Beltline. The store has everything you need for the worksite or the woods. Stop in or check them out online at redwingshoes.com. And by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskiecharters.com. Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny olson Silic, and we've got an all new show for you this week. We're gonna start out by doing something I don't know if we've ever done here on Michigan Out of Doors, and that's trapping groundhogs. Now groundhogs, or woodchucks as they're called, do a lot of damage to farm equipment and livestock and buildings here in Michigan. And all of us hunters try to help out those farmers by curbing some of that population. We're gonna tag along with one trapper who is doing just that. You won't wanna miss that story and Jimmy's going to take us out on the water this week. Well that's right Jenny we are going to have a little fishing on this week's show. I'm going to actually take you down to Lake Erie to do a little walleye fishing but introduce you to a few new products that you as a fisherman might want to be aware of this year. We're also going to have a really good salmon recipe on this week's show. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. The Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Grilla Grills of Holland, Michigan. Makers of wood pellet, charcoal grills, and professional pellet smokers. Grilla Grills are designed for ease of use to improve your grilling and smoking skills. More information at GrillaGrills.com. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at AnglerQuestPontoons.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years. Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. Pastor Ron Meadows has a passion for helping people. He also has a lifelong passion for hunting and trapping. In the spring and summer months, those two passions come together here in the southeast part of the state. Pastor Ron spends a good portion of every day trapping groundhogs, or woodchucks as they're called, and helping to stop damage to crops, farm equipment, and outbuildings. I caught up with Ron and his buddy Gary Robb recently and tagged along as they checked traps. So uh, we've gone into the fields and set some traps and already started uh, trapping. I think we've got probably close to 80 already. So uh, we've got about three dozen out. We're going to make a run and we're going to see how we, uh, how we do this. Our first stop this evening was to check a couple of traps Pastor Ron had set up on an outbuilding at a local farm. Woodchuck tunnels and burrows can do some devastating damage to foundations and driveways if not kept in check. All right, looks like we got one on these two sets Oh, here. we got one already. Yep, we got one on the first two sets here at the barn. We've already taken eight out of here. This is a little pup, looks like a rain guy. Yep. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pull this, this uh, and I'll demonstrate how we do this trap here, but uh, this is intended to hold the trap down so it don't move. And fortunately here, this is here actually to hold the door, so I'm utilizing that with the ring for this spring here. And of course this is the chain so that the animal don't pull it uh, away and I lose it. So what we do is set that trap up like this. You'll see how I'll use that latch here in a moment. And we'll just uh, close this right here. That thing is really, really strong. That opens one side, we go here, we turn it this way, we're going to open this side here, we got it, here's the safety latch to hold the springs in, 
and that way there we can uh, we can remove the chuck. So there we go. Now let me show you how I set this. I'm going to set this trap back here. And what we do? Uh, this is the trigger, right. and you pull this together, and that's the trigger. So you put that trigger on there like that. Make sure, absolutely positively, that the safety latches are here. Because if you put your hand in the wrong place and those safety latches on arm, it may not break your hand, but it's really going to hurt really, really big time. So this trap is actually ready to set back again. So we're going to take it back. And even though there's not too many left here, we're just going to reset this trap, help this farmer out. We'll set that there. And ideally, what I try to do is I try to put the whisker outboard. So if the chuck is coming out, it has to exit a hole. Now usually it's not under a barn, a lot of times it is, but in a burrow. And I want the chuck to come out, so I put the whisker to the outside. That's usually the way I do it. And then we just stake this back so that it don't move. So that's good. The chuck can't go around. Just something to deter the chuck from going around the trap. We'll put that right in here. And you got to make sure you unlatch it so it will work. Take this one, unlatch it. There you go. I'm going to put just a little bit more. Don't take much just so that that will direct the chuck in. We're ready to go. we got one. That trap is working. And then maybe I'll uh, demonstrate here how this trap works. Let's just say that the chuck is on the outside and it's going actually into the barn or into the hole. So it's going to come up. That looks just like a, a weed or a stick. It's going to go in and it, and it moves that and it's got it. And most of the time you'll catch the chuck here. Depending how far they're in, you'll get a, a neck and, and a body. Very, very humane. Very ethical. Now, do they have a sense of smell that you need to worry no, about? No, no, no smell at all. No, they hear well and they see extremely well. You're out in an open field somewhere you can be 200 yards away and they're standing and they're watching you. <laughs> yeah. Seen that before. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. let's go on to the other sets. Someone may say, uh, what do you do with the woodchucks? Well, when we pulled in in the five or seven, here comes another one now, the turkey vultures. We're here and they were having dinner too. Everything's got to eat and it's part of the, the cycle and between the turkey vultures, the coyotes, the possums, the coons, the rats, and there's nothing that goes to waste. They all, they all eat very, very well. And the farmer here is very, very pleased uh, that we're taking these woodchucks out of here. I promise you, you can see where he came across with his equipment and he actually ran right into the den. And I told him where this was at, but he actually ran right into the den here. See where the wheel went in. So you can just imagine if he was combining in the fall and he did that and the head of the, the combine went into the ground. I mean, you're talking maybe $1,000 worth of damage. So, so this farmer here, Farmer Mike, he appreciates this very much. Yep. Right. Very, very humane. Trapping groundhogs requires a keen eye. When scouting spots to set his traps, Ron looks for the more obvious dirt mounds and holes in farm fields and around buildings, but also scrutinizes the outlying areas around fields and hedgerows and wood edges. He looks for matted down weeds and small trails and follows them until he finds the holes to their dens where he sets his traps. If you're interested in trapping, Ron says to start with the rules and regulations. Yeah, what you want to do is make sure that you check the DNR regulations and rules and laws concerning trapping. And there's a big difference of, of how you can trap on private land and on public land, and on land and in water. The size of traps, how high off the ground, how far into five gallon pails in a case of your uh, trapping, for example, raccoons and so forth. So there's some very strict guidelines and make sure you know that you follow those guidelines including some of the basics of making sure every trap has a tag on it that's secured firmly to the trap with your name address phone number and so forth you can have that too but it has to be identified so i'd suggest to everyone make sure you read those rules and regulations they're very detailed and you want to make sure that you're abiding by the law there you go look at that wow perfect Big male. Holy smoke. Big male. Wow. Them guys right there. The farmers don't like them. Bean eaters. Bean eaters. Some kind. So if a chuck happens to come, you can see they're using this trail to come in, and they want to come in right over there. So what I'll do is I'll take, take a stick of any kind, as long as it's not poison oak or poison ivy. Put a little stick here. 
another little stick, just anything. And they take the path of least resistance just like the deer does. Okay, and then I'll, I'll throw another weed over there so they don't pop down there. Maybe one more just for insurance on that side. Nothing that obstructs the trap. We'll do one more. Do that like that. Now that's so inviting, I almost want to go in there. Rom loves the challenge of finding the chuck holes and outsmarting those woodchucks with a properly set trap. It's easy to see the brown spots in bean fields where they've eaten the crops, but they do lots more damage than that. And uh, the other thing is not only with the crops, but also uh, the damage to, say, uh, like last year, I did a horse farm. A lady had four or five horses she was boarding, and there were chuck holes around and all that, so you can imagine with a horse walking around and the holes for the, uh, the chucks, those don't go together so well. In addition to that also, uh, you know, when the combines are going through the soybean fields uh, in the fall, you can imagine if there's dens out in the field, and there are, and uh, the sand or dirt is built up, uh, the head of that combine could go through, and you're talking hundreds, perhaps thousands of dollars of damage to yep. equipment, okay. and then of course a loss of money for the farmer because, you know, they're harvesting less beans because the, the woodchucks are damaged. So it's, it's, it, it helps a lot in the community and uh, build relationship with the farmers, and uh, of course we get to enjoy the great Michigan outdoors as well, so that's always good. I mean, we just got this chuck. I mean, within the last 25, 30 minutes. Whoa, that is a big one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Going into the tunnel. Jeez. This is where they made deep woods off. Woodchucks are very social. And I have trapped as many as 13 woodchucks at the mouth of one den. Now, 13's not living in there at one time, but because they're social, they'll visit from den to den to den. So if you leave the trap there, almost with certainty, eventually, depending on how many chucks there are, you'll catch another chuck. What do you enjoy about doing this? Well, again, I mean, there's multiple reasons. So, you know, I, I grew up as a kid in West Virginia, hunting and outdoors. Ah, I did trapping of muskrat and rabbits and even a little bit of woodchucks back in those days. I love outdoors, being outside. I love being around people. I love helping people. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. It saves a farmer money. There are definitely a lot of happy farmers in and around Ray Township where Pastor Ron does his trapping. He puts in lots of time and drives many miles every day checking his traps. And with the success he has, he's definitely helping curb the large population of nuisance groundhogs in the area. It's an eye-opening experience to stand in a new bean field and see just how much damage one family of groundhogs can do. What looks like fresh dirt is where all the crop has been eaten down. I tagged along for about half of the trap line today, and Ron and Gary already had 12 woodchucks in the truck. And that's a great day of trapping right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, in this next story, we're going to head down to Lake Erie and do a little walleye fishing. But while we're there, we're going to get introduced to a few new products that might make you a better angler. All right, we're working with uh, the uh, Big Fish Tough uh, True Trip uh, divers. Um, these are really, really cool um, divers that we just got in the shop this year. Uh, have been selling really well. Um, we got the, the owner of the company, Dan, here with us, with Paul, and uh, we're going to be uh, showing you how they work. Um, kind of a new thing, right? It's, it's a new thing for, for me. I've never ran them yet, and it's a new thing for Michigan, for sure. Uh, we're going to put some of our uh, jammer spoons on, so we're going to see how these things work on these walleye out here. A few weeks back found me on Lake Erie chasing walleye, but with kind of a twist. Joe Raymer and Andy Gorski both work at Frank's Great Outdoors in Linwood right on Saginaw Bay. They called me and said there was a new diver that they were going to try out and some new spoons that they wanted to test as well. Both Joe and Andy are super fun to fish with, so I met them for a day of testing new gear and catching some dandy walleye at the same time. There we go, first one. First Lake Erie walleye of the day, a little bit go. sporty. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Sporty indeed. Now one thing I need to say is that on camera the lake looks nowhere near four to five footers. 
but just trust me, it was a bit bumpy. But one nice thing about fishing Erie, especially this year, is that the fish are here. And if you can get a line in the water, well, you've got a chance at catching some. Dan Hine is the one who created this new diver that is just being introduced here in Michigan. So I asked him how he ever got started in coming up with this new product. Well, years ago, some of the captains were doing a thing, putting harnesses and all kind of apparatus on the on the jet divers, and it was just so much work, so much expense, uh, kind of a pain to deal with. So I thought, well, there's got to be an easier way to to make this thing work, and and that's really what started the whole True Trip Deep Diver program was just to make a, a simpler method for fishing out here. Huh. So. When did you come up with that idea? Well, it was 2009 when we started selling the, the first ones to some of the charter captains. And, and uh, we tested them a year ahead of that um, out here on the lake, doing all kinds of prototypes and, and worked with it the whole year. Kind of kept it under our hats that season. And then uh, went to the restaurant one morning with some of my products, showed some of the captains. and. And they thought, wow, this thing's really going to work. So huh. that's kind of how we got started with the program. And, and it's uh, it's really a simple way of fishing out here on this on this water. It just uh, makes it so easy for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, not just the captains and the professionals, but the, the everyday boater. They just they, they really work slick. It always amazes me just how much ingenuity sportsmen have, whether it's ice fishermen, bow hunters, or in this case, a walleye charter boat captain. It's pretty cool to see the new products that come to market every year, and also which ones stay and which ones don't. What's a good day of fishing down here typically? Um, last couple weeks we've been getting uh, six to eight man limits in less than two hours. Really? Uh, this year's been phenomenal. Uh, all those 14 and a half inches last year we were catching are all between the 16 and 18 uh, inch range. Just a ton of great eating Lake Erie walleye. This one's probably 16 and a half. Yep, 16 and a half, oh, 17. Nice and fat. Uh, we have mayfly hatch going on right now, so uh, these fish are probably filled with mayflies. A lot of guys say you can't catch fish when, when the mayflies are hatching, but. And it's all up and down area this way right now? Um, right now, anywhere for like Monroe, I know guys are catching limit catches and, and hours. All the way to Ashtabula, I mean Pennsylvania, they're catching them. Um, I fished in Fairport last week and we got 48 fish in less than two hours. Wow. We're in Marblehead right now, five to six foot conditions. And I don't know, we probably made one pass and we've already got a uh, limit and a half in the boat. So. A little bit slower today, probably because of the conditions and a little bit less boat control, but we're putting them in the boat. Lake Erie is really something, and like Paul said, from Monroe East, this season has been very good. And since we had a bit of a lull in the fishing, I had Paul show us just how this new diver actually works. So we have a, a steel rod that's coated right here, and it snaps in and out. So when the fish hits, it's going to pull that mechanism out and the diver's gonna quit diving and float up. So what's gonna happen is, your fish is gonna come along, bite your spoon or your harness or your crank or whatever you have back here, and it's gonna open that diver up, which is gonna allow everything to come up. The fish is gonna come up with the weight, um, the diver's gonna come up, and it'll be able to, to clear all your other lines. Another nice feature about it is if you're gonna reset your line or bring it in for any reason, just grab the rod out of the rod holder. You're gonna give it a little snap and it's gonna pop open. Um, today we have four to five foot waves. So what we're gonna, what we do is with a simple screwdriver here, we just turn the screw, just, just a hair, just a quarter inch, and it's gonna tighten up that mechanism to where it's gonna be a little bit harder for it to open up. So the waves don't, don't open it up. So if you go out and you're in heavier seas and the divers keep on tripping, all you gotta do is bring it up, give it a little snap, or the opposite way, if it's not tripping, you're just gonna give it a little turn back, and it's gonna open right up. Down here on Erie, these guys primarily run these on one big planer board, but you can run them on inline planers as well. 
There's also three different sizes of the divers, so salmon guys are starting to run them, as well as the walleye guys. It's pretty neat to be on a boat like today. They have Saginaw Bay guys bringing new spoons down to try here on Erie, and they have Erie guys with their new divers show them to the Saginaw Bay guys. Fishermen are resourceful to say the least, and it's kind of cool to see guys showing each other what works in their neck of the woods. After a day of fishing, we brought the fish to the local bar that runs a catch and cook program, which is a great way to end the day. Thanks to Joe and Andy for taking me down to Erie. And thanks to Paul and Dan for a fun day of fishing and for showing us a few new things to try this year out on the water. Well, hey everybody, we are here once again at Antlers Fireside Grill with Chef Jim Wood. We're just outside of Canadian Lakes. And the salmon fishing is really good this summer, and I see we're doing some salmon. What are we gonna be doing here today? Well, we're gonna do, this is kind of a South Pacific take on a salmon dish. Um, okay. I just recently got back from New Zealand, and this is kind of some flavors that I brought back with me and kind of experimented with that we're kind of doing at the restaurant now that's, that's going over really well. Cool, well, how do we get started? So first we're gonna make our pineapple relish, and which is basically a fancy word for a pineapple salsa. Just oh, to throw okay. a relish at you. So this is freshly diced pineapple. I like pineapple salsa better. That sounds more. Okay, well that's what we're gonna call it. More outdoorsy. It, yeah, it's very outdoorsy. When I think salsa, I think I'm outdoors. So we've got some <laughs> red, we've got some red onion here, and this is freshly minced uh, cilantro and mint. Okay. And then we've got some fresh ginger, and we're gonna hit it with just a touch of salt. And if you remember on the um, walleye BLT recipe, what I dressed the cabbage with was a citrus vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to dress this with the same vinaigrette. So all that, okay. that whole recipe will be online. So it's kind of one of those deals where you can make a good size recipe of this stuff and keep it around because you can use it for other things. And that's pretty much it then for the, for the salsa? That's it for the salsa. All right, so now we're going to make our curry. To make the curry sauce, start by adding in the actual curry, then add in some fresh ginger and garlic and let it cook down. Soy Next, sauce. add in soy sauce and some coconut milk and bring it to a boil. Then add in the sugar and remove it from the heat. All right, Jim, we got uh, our salsa all set. We got our curry pretty much. And what are we going to do to the salmon here? We're just going to sear it off with a little bit of salt. Simple and easy. Mm -hmm. I know we kind of flew through some of that salsa as far as we didn't really mention amounts, but if you need to get all the right measurements, we'll have that all on the website. And yep, as soon as, as soon as this airs. Now this is a thicker piece of salmon, so I'm actually going to sear it on all four sides. Okay. Um, it's going to take it's going to take a little while, you know. Um, I like to eat mine medium rare, medium. I don't like to go much more than that. Yeah, that is. Is there a safety thing when it comes to fish like this? Because sometimes. You have it overdone. Sometimes, it's, I mean, is there a there, anything to be I mean, worried about? There, I mean, yeah, there are some some things that you can worry about it if it's fresh. Okay. Like if you just caught it, um, there's some definitely some bacteria that. that can, can you eat salmon like you would like a tuna? You know, that's almost raw. Yeah, if it's frozen, if you've frozen it for a certain amount of time, okay. then I would say to be safe. And your typical um, home freezer, 15 to 20 days. At you know, if whatever you have at zero to negative 10, 15 to 20 days, there won't be any, and, and unless there's something crazy going on yeah. with your fish, any of the bacteria that's known out there that's naturally occurring, it's it's hmm. perfectly safe to eat it raw. Okay, Jim, we got our salmon all brown and ready to go. Our curry is curing. Our salsa is ready to go. Yep. How do we put this all together? All right, so. Got the coconut curry done. Sauce that on the plate. And I did put my finger in that. That has a really good flavor to it. Thank you. Um, not for putting your finger in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just among friends here. Yes, gotcha. And then the, and what is the name of this dish? This is seared salmon with coconut curry, pineapple salsa.
Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. We've got a lot of fun in store for you here on the show this summer. We'll take you out musky fishing on Lake St. Clair. We'll head over to Lake Huron for some big lake fishing, and I might even get back after some groundhogs with a rifle this time too. We've got a lot of fun. We're always in a different corner of the state bringing you something new. If you want to see where we are or where we're headed next, you can always do that online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a great way to catch us. You can always do that at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there. We're also on lots of different social media platforms. And if you do the YouTube thing, you can actually subscribe to Michigan Out of Doors TV and get an email anytime we post something new. So lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks. And hey, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By the locally owned and operated members of the Michigan Petroleum Association and the National Oil Heat Research Alliance, who provide oil heat with bioheat, a renewable fuel source designed to benefit the home and the environment. Details on the web at useoilheatmichigan.com. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away stays with me night and day it's the road that leads to my home state i am a michigan man changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream the white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees i am a michigan man i am i am a michigan man that's where i'm from and i'll show you my hands lord above i love this land i St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above.